All right, this demonstration is going to be for the straight spoke wheel, and I got to say that the straight spoke is a lot easier to do than the flared spoke because the flared was uh, each spoke was a process and a product of rotation, whereby the straight spokes on this one is a product of linear moves. Definitely no rotation involved. The only rotation required is between spokes and not for the spoke geometry itself. I will probably just plunge here and run up to this side, jump the rib and come right back down using a combination of XY moves and then the, I will rotate the rotary table and do exactly the same thing. So up and over, up and over. And when I'm done I'll just come back and pick up one location and just do all of the windows. I'll move the uh, tool into position with a combined Y X move and then all of my moves will be 45 degrees apart. Let's put the part on the table. I'm not going to bore you with the setup because you know the center of the part has to be over the center of the table. Toe clamp it down and let's start the cameras rolling. Get this done. For the remainder of the eight pockets, I'm only going to need to establish three new positions because the one is established on the pocket prior to. See if you can stay with that. All right, now I gotta say, I should have made that on Valentine's Day because that looks pretty cool from where I'm standing. I am gonna reposition this cutter in a linear step, basically right where it is right now on the top outside corner of these features. And to my GoPro audience, I apologize for that. And I'm just gonna make a subtle move across the hearts Kind of looks nice the way it is. I'm in, almost inclined to leave it the way it is and just hollow it out just for yucks. You know what? I'm going to do every other one. That way I get the best of both worlds. I'm going to do four that are flattened out and I'm going to leave four in the heart mode. And then when I blast it, it should come out almost uh, perfect. So 
Let's take a look. And I'm going to do the, the step across the top. Instead of worrying exactly about what the incremental rotation is, I'm going to do two-thirds of it from this side, and then I'm going to go back and sweep the other way. I'll get close by eye, probably close enough that I could call it, but let's see how that works out. Okay, I kind of like the way that looks. Pretty cool. I am going to keep the cutter set on that particular diameter that I've cleaned up the outside walls with, and I'm going to relieve the center out of this like a spoked wheel. Okay, we have heart shapes every 90 degrees and we have pie shapes every 90 degrees. Center recess, we are going to move to the outside of the major diameter that's cut and make a wagon wheel out of this thing. Jump the clamps like we did in the other demonstration. And bear with me, I'm going to refocus and we'll get that done. to knock off two clamps, go 50-50. Okay, we do have a little bit of buildup on the cutter edge because I am running this dry and this is aluminum, so the finish will be less than optimum on the OD, but I plan on giving it a little bit of a buff when it comes out of here, so let's put the other two clamps on 180 degrees apart, take these two out and finish the profile. Very careful not to crush your part at this point. And let's reposition this GoPro for a second. Okay. 
And like I've said in the past, do not take off the stationary clamps until the new clamps are in position. And clamp the part as tight as you can without destroying it any of the features based on how fragile the part is. I'm going to assume hand tight is good and risk the slip. I don't want to dent this part. It's only a demo but I don't want to dent it anyway. If you may have noticed, at the end of my cut, at the blend area, I will always feed off as opposed to stopping midstream. If you stop a cutter midstream, chances are it's going to relax and it's going to leave a vertical footprint, so don't do that. I like it. That's kind of skinny, huh? Beautiful. Let's clean it up and see what it looks like. Okay, there you go. Part every 90 degrees. I'm going to stick this in the blast unit. And for those of you that aren't familiar with those, I'll just walk you over and show you. This little beauty right here. This is a 48 inch three door blast cabinet. And by three door, it means we have a large hatch in the center that lifts up, and we have a feed through on either end. So based on how much dust you want to create in your blasting environment, I could put a 20 foot long shaft through this thing and blast the entire thing. So it is not a hydro blaster. There's no water in here. It's just strictly a glass mead, but it really does a nice job. It's got a vacuum on the back, so it's a very dust free environment on the inside. And I'm going to run this at about 65 pounds because I could turn this up to about 120 pounds, eh, about 100 pounds and it'll just eat right through the part, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn it down to about 60 pounds and uh, blast away. So this is the before, and all these little feather edges right here, they should erode pretty quick inside this machine. Let's take a look at it when it's done. Here is the result of the straight spoke effort. As you can see, it is really not hard to do, and the little heart pattern is the remnant of the pre-machining of the outside web, if you didn't watch the whole thing, it was plunged, plunged, and then I blended this out, but kind of thought that looked cool, every other one, so I left it. Now remember, if you want a different radius on the outside, uh, this is the only coordinate that you are going to have to remember to change. You know, the X movement naturally will change based on the radius of the cutter, but when it comes to the tangent down here, the tangent point is the vertical, so you would not have to have a different Y move right here. You know, a 5 16 cutter or is going to be the same as an eighth inch cutter, is going to be the same as a quarter inch cutter. It's all going to have the same Y. The only one that's going to be tangent to the hub naturally is the 5 16 but if you wanted a smaller radius up here and you wanted to walk along this whole edge to get there, you would not have to change this dimension right here. It's identical. This one will migrate diagonally as the cutter gets smaller. And I'll tell you, that's a pretty cool looking wagon wheel. I'm rethinking making mine in seven segments. That was just too easy. Got to say, I did cheat. Put it in the lathe and pressure turn the outside. Took about five thou off of it just to clean it up because there's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you can't compete with a lathe finish. So there you go. Blasted it, ran it across the memory, took the high spots off, the glass bead took care of the rest of the uglies in there and if I ever did this under coolant the surface finish of these ribs would be far superior to what it is there's nothing worse than 
hot aluminum stick and a dry carbide. In my opinion, that's just a bad combination of recipe for cold fusion. There you go. Next one up will probably be the impeller style. And I'm going to have to make a couple of things to support that effort. So bear with. Enjoy these while you can. Thanks for watching.